all politicians should make minimum wage. Because then they'll raise it. Then they'll realize how hard it, it is to live on minimum wage. A lot of these folks, some of them come from political families. They've never had to work a day in their lives. Some of them come from just money themselves. It, one very telling thing that happened in this bill is that the eight Democratic senators who voted against a $15 minimum wage raise amendment to the bill are worth collectively $43 million. That's eight people worth $43 million. You know eight people worth $43 million? I don't. Joe Manchin is worth almost $8 million himself. In West Virginia, one of the poorest states in this country, what's the cumulative wealth of the 50 Republican senators who voted against this bill? I'd like to know. I think we're over placating the right. Like, why are we placating the party of death and insurrectionism? We have the majority, use it. And so the fact that we were able to pass this stimulus bill without a single Republican voter, that is insane. Like, think about that. Not a single member of the opposition party, all of two, <laughs> a big democracy over here, not a single member of the other party voted for this massive rescue plan. That can never be lost, so I really hope the Democrats utilize that, utilize the, you know, the beep, you know, this is your president Biden. We did this shit for you. You're welcome. You know, that's it. That's all you got to do. Explain what the shit is and carry on. If not for COVID, Trump would have been reelected. Sad to say, incredibly difficult <laughs> reality to swallow, but he bungled COVID so badly that even seniors were like, well, I just want to live. And so they they didn't vote for him, but they have the, he had the senior vote locked down until he started trying to kill him. And so this is not only the result of the failed response to COVID, but also a sea change in the Democratic Party in terms of the squad, AOC, Ayanna Presley, Ilhan Omar, these young progressives happen to be often women of color that increased in 2020 their share of the Democratic Party in the House. I'm so glad that there are people like Cori Bush in the House of Rep representatives who is a single working mom who worked everything from education to healthcare. Jamal Bowman, who was a school principal. These are folks who actually have working class experience. You know, they're not coming in the way I think a lot of politicians come in, which is just sort of a, an exercise in ego and influence. They're coming in with real ideas and they're fighting for them. Progressive Democrats have a lot more pull than they did as much as Biden tries to keep them at bay. You know, I think the jury's still out whether he's going to be completely status quo or actually um, be transformative, but not by his own accord. If it were left up to him, he would just be like hosting pancake breakfasts and sniffing hair. Just be that for, you know, and like a couple of more wars in the Middle East. That would all, that's it. Four years, you're done. But no, this is an entire effort by grassroots movements to get this man to actually deliver for the American people. It's really important to see this stimulus bill in the history of failure at actually addressing crises with proper responses. In 2008, we did not address the economic crisis properly. That has only driven more consolidation, more economic inequality. We not only have fascism and a resurgence of Trump at our doorstep, we've got a killer virus, climate change, and Democrats have proven they don't know what they're doing. As much as you think centrist Democrats have some sort of grand plan, they don't. And that's almost like less reassuring than thinking that they do. They don't have a plan. They need help. This stimulus bill is absolutely the result of movements that have pushed them, of Bernie Sanders, of Elizabeth Warren, the squad in the House, making sure this bill was transformative. This is a moment where, unlike in 2008 when Obama was elected and the movement sort of went home and was like, yay, we won that now the movement is just arms crossed, like, mm-hmm, yeah, do it, do it. I'll wait, oh no, I'll wait. Oh, I've got time, I've got plenty of time. Deliver. As much as people on the left, I think we're mad at the fact that there wasn't a $15 minimum wage included in this bill. I think the bill has a chance to be incredibly transformative in people's lives and, and will concretely make a difference. There is direct payments to every single American of $1,400. So a family of four might see $5,600, that's big. There's also child tax credits. There's money for states to extend unemployment benefits, the money for combating climate change. There's money for healthcare and vaccine administration, even though we don't deserve it because 
There are many more countries who've been taking COVID far more seriously, but hey, I digress. It is a big package. It's something we should have seen after the financial collapse of 2008 under Obama. The stimulus didn't go far enough to save the American economy. The result has been way more inequality now and the rise of American fascism. So I think if we have a shot at actually stopping a Trump 2.0, then we need the kind of rescue aid this package gives us. I mean, a lot of countries around the world take it for granted. In Germany, artists were given a big chunk of money. Artists, the most non-essential. I do stand-up comedy. I know how non-essential we are. <laughs> like, I know that our dick jokes are not saving lives, but maybe they do. We needed money to stay at home. And so this is a real shot at actually saving people from poverty, saving people from falling into destitution. When you help working people, when you help the middle class, when you give people money in their pockets and alleviate some of their stress, the entire economy benefits, right? Like, oh gosh, when people aren't just, you know, tackling each other for crumbs, then maybe we can actually, you know, start a business, own a home. Well, forgetting owning a home, that's never gonna happen. But you know what I mean, like other things. We've been so bludgeoned with this Chicago boys, neoliberal free market BS for decades now. All the stuff that doesn't work and all the stuff that's left our climate in decay, Thatcherism, Reaganism, this is where they die. They're dying. I mean, it took a long time to kill, but they're dying now. And so we have to be birthing these new ideas and that like the trickle down economics is total BS. The only thing that trickles down is like just a little crumb from the corner of Steve Bannon's disgusting, stubbly, this is embarrassing, pockmarked, cancerous lung. You guys have got to stop. This is going to start getting ugly. I'm sorry, you get the picture. This is only a first step. This stimulus bill is important. It's great that it passed and it will absolutely help people out in this incredibly difficult moment. We need to build on that. And Biden has an option. Go big or you're going to get voted out in 2024. So I hope we see this stimulus bill then applied to things like higher education. Let's just be real. If Biden tomorrow absolve $50,000 of student debt for every American who has that, he would be bigger than TikTok with Gen Z. Like bigger, he would just, he would be untouchable, untouchable. How do you not do that? It's all federally held loan debt, like it, ah. So I hope he can take this energy and apply it to those other places if he wants to not only woo over some of the lost white Trump voters, but more importantly, prove to the people who gave him this victory, the black and brown Americans, the immigrants, the Muslims, people who've historically been left out of the system and have never been given a reason to really vote, to have a massive and historic voter turnout in the year 2020 also help that Trump is a massive piece of shit. But I'm saying, build on those gains and you will see once again a historic turnout for you in 2024. We are not out of the woods at all. This is a crossroads, not just a crossroads in terms of the economy or healthcare, it's a crossroads in terms of the climate and the very idea of having future generations. The world is on fire all of the time. I'm from a state that is on fire half of the year. If we fight for our future, if we really take some of these cues, especially from, if we all just Greta Thunberg up, man. Just put your hair into some braids and fucking go ham. We gotta, we gotta do this. Just get your scowl on, put your hair in braids, get your scowl on. We have to take back all of these countries, right? We have an opportunity here, not just with this bill, but with everything that it will mean and also future transformative legislation to come. Let's just keep saying it. No Republican voted for this. Only Democrats did, and not because Biden wanted to, but because he had to. He had to. Make sure to become a patron of Double Down News because they interviewed me and, and I, that made me feel special. And I hope that you also feel special by becoming a patron because they're tight and we have to support alternative media because otherwise, we're just gonna talk about Harry and Meghan. Also check out my podcast, The Habituation Room. Also got a Patreon.